Hello there, welcome to the world famous V&A Museum, which opens with the first international retrospective of one of the most iconic fashion designers ever. Her signature daisy is recognizable to this day, and of course, we're talking about Mary Quant. From basic design beginnings, she created the miniskirt, made hot pants and A-line mini dresses famous and designed a look that epitomizes the design revolution of the swinging 60s. In June 18, the V&A launched a call out to the public in order to track down rare Mary Quant clothing from women all over the country. They received over a thousand responses, delivered alongside the most incredible personal stories of women and their favourite Mary Quant garment. So, many of the pieces on show today have never been seen by the public before. Do you think Mary was actually aware of what she was creating, the impact she would have all over the world, literally, with this swinging 60s style of London, you know, where live music was booming, club scenes were emerging. Do you think she had any inkling? that she was actually go is, was on that road of you know major superstardom as a fashion designer. I don't think she did to be honest. I think it was a real surprise to her. She's um, notoriously a very quiet and reserved person, but she had to learn so quickly and you'll see within the exhibition there's some amazing archive footage where she talks about her ideas about what fashion should be for women um, and what it can be. It should all be about self-expression and it should be about making effectively like a tool for you to compete in life and make your life easier. But I think um, despite her vision, I think it was a real surprise to her that it took off as successfully as it did. Quant designed her famous A-line shift dresses in all sorts of materials and with different styling details. She moved into mass production in 1963 with her Ginger Group, so she would have two main collections for her mainline collection. She had Ginger Group, which I think was another two collections, and then she had all of her mass-produced licensing products, so it was like a constant stream of producing and designing. She was prolific throughout the year. The new mini lengths defined a brand new level of female power, and the colourful legs to go with it were an incredible statement for women at the time. The brilliant alligator rainwear collection from 1963 mixes colours and masculine design details for waterproofs that still look great fun today. Mary Quant's iconic look broke all rules and brought fun into life for all these girls who were used to looking like their mums in post-war years. The one thing that Mary Quant might not have known is that she had created something so incredible that was going to change the future of fashion. Mary Quant was a visionary in subcontracting licenses, including this affordable and funky footwear collection, as well as tights and even makeup, creating the forerunner for what is known today as British street style. With her footwear ranges and her makeup ranges and countless licensing deals, I wonder if Mary Quant, with her little daisy as her logo, wasn't the first female superpower fashion entrepreneur of her time. Her branding vision included the infamous Daisy Doll, which was released in the UK in 1973, complete with an annual booklet featuring cutting-edge fashion items you could dress your doll in. We say, Barbie, eat your heart out. Do you think Mary Quant was actually aware of what she was doing at the time, creating these incredibly new styles and iconic looks and introducing fun and flirtiness into fashion and becoming an icon herself on the way? I think she had an incredible vision, so I think she one of her greatest skills was seeing uh, fashion as a kind of tool to anticipate change and, and possibilities for women. I think in the very early stages it was a very kind of amateurish thing and very small and I think she basically was doing it for fun, but very swift it became this huge operation, very, very successful, and I think she basically had to adapt along the way and became a very clever businesswoman. She was really ahead of the time in terms of being the face of the brand and having coherent branding uh, and marketing. So, yeah, she very much learned along the way. Stephanie, thank you so much for talking to us. Mary Quant, we salute you. It is incredible how Mary Quant's design talent shaped the way of fashion worldwide. Whatever she may have achieved for the industry, there are millions of women who either have a Mary Quant story to tell or benefit from her front running, which this exhibition shows in great detail. 
To this day, I love the guttiness of her designs and have great respect for Mary Quant for what she has achieved, what she has been able to pursue as a dream and actually making it reality. Thanks for watching Tadao TV today. Don't forget to subscribe to our fab and free newsletter online and on YouTube too. Hope you had fun with us. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.